Hello, just before we begin this interview, I just wanted to make everyone aware that my computer was two days away from breaking down on me at the time of this interview, and um, unfortunately some of the audio was glitched as a result of this, um, and I've had to re-record some of what I said with um, while sick, and um, it may sound a little bit different. I didn't want to not upload this interview because Kenneth was absolutely wonderful, and I really think people need to know about his book. So thank you in advance for your consideration, guys. Let's get on with it. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Creatives Assemble podcast. I am Liam London, author of The Shiftiverse and the host of this interview. Uh, with me today, I have the award-winning author, Mr. Kenneth Johnson. How are you doing, Kenneth? Doing great, Liam. How are you doing, man? Not too bad, my friend. Not too bad. So today we're here to talk about your latest book, which is a, uh, a writer's resource book, uh, A Quick Guide to Archetypes and Allegory. It's a very cool title. I really like the way it rolls off the tongue. Um, but before we get into the book itself, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about yourself. So if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been writing, do you see yourself as a professional, a semi-professional or a hobbyist? And what, what sort of got you into writing? Well, my first book came out in 2014. Uh, quickly won a book award. Next thing I knew, I was speaking at conferences. It was about restorative justice. Um, I'm trained um, in both culture and conflict. I have certifications for uh, mediations, restorative justice, all that type of um, alternative dispute resolution. And then I have a degree um, also not only in business, but I have a degree in social sciences. So I wrote the first book back in 2014, then I did a follow-up book, and it won awards as well. And then I started getting um, jobs where people wanted me to do uh, edits about culture. And I noticed that the authors really didn't understand the characters and how important characters were. So I decided to write this resource book uh, based off of Jungian psychology. And so I'm, I'm a professional, but I'm not like what people think of as a professional author. I'm a professional who happens to be an author. And I use my authorship to get the word out of what I do professionally. Oh, that's 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 brilliant. Uh, that was very eloquently put. Um, so yeah, so uh, so you've been writing since two thousand and fourteen, correct? Or were yes. you writing before then? Well, I I used to do um, opinion columns and things of that nature. Not, nature. I've been well. I've been professionally writing since middle school. Actually, um, I my parents got me a electric typewriter. For a Christmas present, I started writing, and I was making several thousand dollars a, a year just writing um, for contests and things of that nature. And then oh. when I got out of high school, I started writing for newspapers and magazines. Oh, brilliant! So you really are um, you are a thoroughbred uh, thoroughbred writer then. So do you you lean more into the nonfiction side of things? I'm guessing from the sounds of uh, your your uh, history. So you're more of a like a nonfiction writer. That, that has been my lane. Um, just until recently have I started writing fiction, but I haven't published anything yet. Just getting a novel written has been interesting. Yeah, it's but, a very uh, difficult process, isn't it? It's a very um, interesting process, uh, writing a fiction <laughs> novel. <laughs> having characters come to you in your dreams and tell you how it should be written is very, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, excellent. Well, that's that's... What uh, what's uh, the genre of the novel you're writing? Then are you um, at liberty to paranormal. discuss that yet? It's paranormal. paranormal. It's a piece about 1991, a college professor uh, that he's going after paranormal activity, and he's in Florida. So that's what it will be based upon. Oh, brilliant! People people love the paranormal, so it should uh, it should definitely do well. Couple more fun questions before we get into the well, uh, personal questions before we get into the book, just for a bit of fun. Uh, what's your favorite genre to uh, to either read or write? I I really do like the um, nonfiction genre, just because basically that's I'm doing research all the time, so you have to love it. Uh, I also like science fiction i love paranormal so those are great fields that kind of pair with what i like to do and I, i'm a huge term fan <laughs> so <laughs> it's funny you mentioned science fiction it tends to stray into 
uh, the philosophical side of things, doesn't it? It tends to ask uh, questions that we can generally pull into, you know, into context of everyday life. Basically, it tends to ask hard questions. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it connects that you say it's you say that, but you generally stick to to nonfiction. So I, I find that a lot with. Um, uh, t academics tend to gravitate towards science fiction because they it tends to make you think you t it tends not to be so much escapism as it does you know making you sort of ask questions about yourself and society um so yeah uh, last last uh, fun question then we'll get into your book uh, who's your favorite fictional character mm. well there is a local author and when i say local she's in north florida uh, and she wrote a book about North Florida, and there's this character that she calls Butterball. <laughs> and the lady is just hilarious, and if you knew anything about Southern culture, there's these very eclectic ladies that are very, usually very large and boisterous, and they just are very wise, but they're also very funny at the same time because they, they're klutzes and everything. And, and Butterball epitomizes that. And everybody <laughs> in their family in the South has a Butterball. So <laughs> my, my family really, was so played by Nick <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like a satire of, a, of that sort of, that sort of uh, person, basically, like, a, like a, taking that, um, that, that sort of big Florida gal and uh, sort of parodying it almost or satirizing it. Correct. She actually she captured the archetype, but it's like one of those um, regional archetypes. It's not one of those altruistic, some, you know, ar archetypes or iconic figures like Jung would talk about. Um, so somebody from Florida would get it, but I wouldn't expect somebody from, you know, say France or Spain to understand it. Yeah, yeah, I get, I, I totally get where you're coming from. It's uh, quite colloquial. Um, so that brilliant that's that's awesome you're the first person who's actually given me an obscure character so far it's uh, sherlock holmes has been the most uh, popular one i've had um people telling me um so um, let yeah, my, uh, i was gonna say a friend of mine she's an author as well uh, stephanie osborne she she's also a former nasa scientist and she actually has a sherlock holmes series so <laughs> i understand the, the 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 fact people like sherlock holmes so much yeah Absolutely, got it. It's a, poof, you you certainly hang around with some smart people. Um, so let's move into your uh, your latest book, because uh, this this sounds really fascinating. Uh, a quick guide to archetypes and allegory. So without, I don't want you to obviously give us the juice or anything that you know makes it not worth going to buy the book. Uh, but what can we expect from this from this book? Is this um. Does this take creative writing into account, or is this very hard science, like a sort of psychology or interpretation, or, or sort of your own interpretation of characters, basically? Well, Jung was the one that basically started everything off, saying that there were these primordial icons in our psychology, our collective psychology, which meant that you could go to any culture in the world and they knew what a dragon was. They knew what these characters were, and you didn't have to describe them. And so what this does is it builds off a of Jungian psychology. And over the years, what's happened is that we went from embracing this concept to rejecting it. And as such, writing has went down in quality as we've rejected this. And so what I do is I, I kind of bring it back. I explain how you can change the hidden meanings of characters, but how certain character types actually are u best used for a certain purpose. And so it, 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 it is interpretive, but it's interpretive based off of Jung's basic principles. And then I also give uh, historic and also contemporary examples of how it was best used. So for instance, I was talking about that I love comic books. Uh, in America, we used to have the Comic Code Authority, and that meant that every comic book had to go through the Comic Code Authority, otherwise it couldn't be published. And one of the things you couldn't write about was werewolves, because Jungian psychology experts said that uh, teenage boys, they would relate to uh, the, the werewolf and the sexuality and the angst of a werewolf and would rage out so you couldn't write about it and so that's how <laughs> the incredible hulk actually came to be 
because in England at at about about the eighteen hundreds around then there was a, a movement where the French werewolf was not something that you were to write about so that is when you got the the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and so the Hulk is based off of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde which is just based off of the werewolf and my mind has just been blown <laughs> basically that I, I've never drawn that uh, when you say it when you explain it to me I'm like oh my god you're right um, but I've never ever seen those those parallels that is that sounds brilliant. Um, so, is this is this book um, is this book a how to write, or is this more of a you can read this and, and glean some some insight and, and glean deeper meaning? Uh, sorry, deeper meaning, or do, is this more you know um, this is how to write these characters? If that makes sense, it, it, it's not really a how to. It, it, I give. I definitely give my opinion, and I, I'm not very shy about giving my opinion on it. Uh, but what I do is I say, this is how others have done it, and this is the way that it should be done. But other than that, I still give the authors free reign to do what they wish. It's, it's very philosophical. And so I've had some authors that they totally reject it, and that's fine. And then others, they just like, it's, it's, it's almost like a magic wand I didn't realize I had. <laughs> and so different ones react differently. It's not me telling somebody how to do it. It just is a way of me saying these characters are best used for this practice or for this message. And you can change up the message. And here are examples of where people have done it. And it's a very short book. You can read it definitely in a day if you have nothing else better to do. Two three days if you're if you're taking your time trying to read it, but it, it it does give you a lot of insights. It's one guy he one of the reviewers he said it was like a 500 page textbook in a just matter of 70 something pages long. So uh, it, it's I, I don't put a lot of fluff in my books. So that's where it is. Brilliant, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So it's it's definitely. So we, we, we're definitely leaning into the, the sort of the philosophical and this is this sounds to me very much like a, you know, I have some interesting stuff to say. I've researched this because th from what you've told me, this is this is coming from an extremely academic standpoint. This is not an opinion piece as in, um, you know, I think this just because I think this 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 definitely sounds like from the history and stuff you've you've sort of uh, explained to me, it definitely sounds like a, um, you know, this is. This might only be a few pages. This might only be a, a, a is it 70, 71 pages you, you said? Se um, I think it's 76, something yeah, like that. 76. This might only be 76 pages, but this is 76. But every, basically every line has been meticulously sort of researched and fought out um, <laughs> from the sound of this. Um, so where, if you were to give this give this book to a demographic, is it certainly for all authors then? Does this, does this bas is this basically like a, a, a holy grail for authors who really want to um, make sure that they write their characters correctly and that they, they understand why they're writing their characters a certain way? Well, I... I want it to be a starter reference. I don't want it to be, you know, a Bible that people go to strictly. It, it is to to get the mind started thinking, because I, I talk about there's some areas areas um, and some icons that have not been exploited yet, and so there's a lot of resources out there on this. But people are neglecting them, so it's just a it's a way to wet the whistle, as we say over here in America. <laughs> and I, I'm, it's not just authors, uh, screenwriters. I, I I talk a lot in the book about movies and television shows. Uh, comic book authors, uh, they're huge. They use archetypal images and and messages and all that. So it, basically, any writer that is just wanting to understand characters better or trying to figure out why their sales are not 
getting to where they need to be because you can i have some friends right now that they write about pirate stuff and like i told them this is the wrong economy this is the wrong uh social structure we have going on right now with the social dynamic to be writing about pirate books because we don't gravitate to them uh mummies right now are a terrible topic to be writing about because they represent religious overtones but after 9-11, when we had um, the terrorist attacks over here in America, mummy uh, books, mummy movies went through the roof. And so it, it also helps you understand that you need to have in your portfolio manuscripts that you're not going to publish yet, but have it for when the time is right to publish. Oh, so this will also, so, this will also help you. Um, so this is not just this is how you write characters. This is also... Um, a, a resource for gauging the market almost um so you can yes. gauge when when it's the right time to to publish your book because obviously like you say genres tend to go up and down don't they i mean sci-fi came back with a bang because obviously star wars uh kate came back to the forefront um you know but you know a few years ago fantasy was the hot topic wasn't it sort of game of thrones lord of the rings that that sort of thing um so yeah so so this uh, this sounds like this sounds like a pretty incredible book for for uh, seventy six pages. It sounds like there's a, there's an awful lot in there. Um, so do we t do you sort of tackle the themes of is there sort of a lot of um anthropology and stuff in this where you where you've sort of looked at uh you know like different cultures from history. So we, you know I'm not gonna you know ask you which ones, but like sort of like the ancient Greeks and stuff. Is there a lot of that in there too? Where where you've sort of yeah. gone back and looked at these cultures and why they sort of have these mythical um archetypes and why they seem to have uh, correlated and why people seem to be able to universally recognize them. I've, I've not only done that, but I've also talked about the evolution of the characters from that ancient period of time to present. Uh, so talking about the mummies, uh, zombies originally were very much like mummies, and now zombies have morphed into what was historically called a ghoul. And so I explained the the morphology of zombies and why they were so popular um, up until about, uh, say, about 10 years ago. So that I, I do talk about that. I go into the dragons of different cultures because, like I said, there's different cultures have different dragons. And so I, I do go into the anthropology of it, but then I also talk about the evolution of the characters. Excellent. Brilliant stuff. Um, so, were there the, uh, something else I'd like to ask? Was there any challenges when writing this book? Did you did you yourself come across? Did you struggle with the editing, or was just the research a, a, a load? Or were you, was there any sort of roadblocks when you were writing this book that you came across? I think a lot of the roadblocks came from the industry itself, because when I started reaching out to people and saying this is what I'm doing, they, they're like. Oh, you're missing the market. You're missing the target. You're not understanding. This is all cliche. This is, we don't do this anymore. And then I started looking at what the market results were showing and book sales have plummeted. And the less than half of Americans read books now or buy books. And so what I was trying to explain is Possibly this is the reason why is that we no longer tell meaningful stories that we can relate to because we're misusing the characters and we're not using the allegories of the characters properly. And so by de developing this, we can make more compelling stories. And so it was really the market um, and the industry leaders that gave me the hardest uh, uh, kickback on this not only when I was writing the book, but also after I published it, then I got a little bit of kickback from it until I started winning the awards and people wanted me to talk about it. And then there's like, oh wait, this yeah. is actually good. I, I have to be I have to be totally honest. Um it sounds like utter nonsense on their side. Like it sounds like they're just talking claptrap like from what you've from how you've described the book this sounds like the very thing we need right now i am i'm kind of well you've done the research but i'm also of the opinion that you know writing uh, as a, as an art form has kind of plummeted i think the ability to self publish has um has diluted the the quality that um 
there's we have too much we have too many writers basically the we have um oversaturized um oversaturated sorry the market and uh, a lot of people are all singing from the same song books and uh you know you know misuse it like you say misusing the characters i i certainly notice in um a lot of the sort of hollywood films that you know the more recent hollywood films that there seems to be a disconnect and I, I I've sort of done a done a lot of reading on this and there does seem to be a disconnect between how the audience views the characters and um it sounds to me like they're talking rubbish when they've said when they've kicked back at this and you and saying like oh no it's cliche we don't we don't need this this sounds exactly like what we need right now for writers to be able to sort of you know to to make their work sparkle again I suppose because um I think in the industry and like like with 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 writing you know like comic books and everything it seems to have um it certainly seems to have, have, have fallen short lately um and this this just yeah this this absolutely sounds like a a worthwhile investment for any writer who's listening to this uh, interview right now I I'm already sold. He, Kenneth has only spoken to me for about ten minutes, and I, I'm already sold. This is a this this sounds like a an excellent writer's resource. Um, what inspired you to to do this then, Kenneth? Was this basically was it just oh writing has has gone downhill? I I want to help correct that, or was it a, a business decision for you? Was it like oh I think I can I can. I've got a niche product here and I can market it. What was the, uh, what was the inspired you to write this book? All of the above. Uh, I, I was put on a board, uh, Florida authors um, and publisher association. I was put on their board directors. Uh, from there, I was put over the uh, national book awards contest. Then I started doing the editing for uh, cultures and I started seeing a bunch of what you call rubbish and <laughs> it, it bothered me tremendously. And the, I think what it is, we're losing vetting. Uh, you, we used to have publishers that would kick away all the bad stories. And we used to have all these different barriers that kind of filtered out the garbage. Yeah. And, uh, so now you have these magazines on how to write but the people that are given this advice have never written a book or a, a script or anything before in their life. They they went straight out of college to, to or out of high school or whatever to writing for a magazine, and they don't know what they're talking about. And so there's no vetting in the market. Not as far 100%. as a business uh, deal, you know, I don't write any book without a business plan first, and I've got to sell a thousand copies the first year to break even that that is the industry standard i still go with the industry standard of a thousand books as your break even and so i don't even write if i don't think that it will sell and so i, I had a, a niche market that i wanted to reach and so that it was a business thing but what really motivated me motivated me was just the garbage that i was editing <laughs> and like i had one that just hurt my brain it was a it was a book about alien vampires and I was trying to explain and they were speaking, they was at these French places and they were speaking in French and stuff. I'm like, why would an alien vampire be speaking French? It makes no sense. I, I tried to explain to the author that, you know, aliens represent culture and vampires represent culture, but aliens they, they they represent represent culture from the bedroom and that perspective, whereas a an alien is church, um, the grocery store, the workplace, your neighborhood. So you're, you're still talking about culture, but different ways. And she just looked at me like I had a horn growing out of my head. <laughs> a lot of writers and, do, I'm afraid, that these days, my friend. Um, you. I think, uh, like you say, there's not enough vetting, and I also think uh, writers, the, the general writing community, are quite sensitive. You tell them their work's bad, and they kick and scream um, <laughs> about it. Um, yeah, abs absolutely. Aliens, aliens and vampires probably don't mix too well, from how you've just explained how they the, how they both uh, represent dis different aspects of culture. Um, so. 
yeah, <laughs> that's that's that sounds like it was a was a fun time to edit. <laughs> oh yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> yes. So, um, my last question for you uh, before, uh, and if there's anything else you'd like to talk about, we'll talk about that. Uh, my last question for you: Do you have any plans to follow this book up? with any any other you know writers resource books or you know anything of that nature or are you strictly focusing on your novel now well no the the quick guide series is right now going through its final edits and so the follow-up is plots and plot lines a quick guide to plots and plot lines and what i'm doing there is i'm explaining what a plot is explain that's different than a plot line and then I stop talk about story arcs and all these different elements of that nature because we have a group of writers now called pantsers. And they tend to dominate the market where they write by the sea of their pants instead of plotting out a, a story plot yeah. line. And so this it, it, it takes takes them on the next step of writing. You you got your characters, now let's think of a plot and then a simple plot line. Okay. And and then as soon as I get done with that, I've got another book. Uh, it, it's a book using fortune telling techniques to for the pantsers that refuse to develop their own plot lines, but they're wanting to do something like that where they can throw dice or they can draw cards or whatever fortune telling device they like. And then basically it gives them the story to write based off of runes or whatever they wish to use. So kind of like a kind of like a almost like a game, isn't it? Like a game of how to write a story. Exactly. Um, sort of like D and D. It reminds me of a little bit when um, when people in Dungeons and Dragons, when people who couldn't make their mind up about what character they wanted, the D and D used to have these sections where it's like you roll a dice and uh, whatever number it was would tell you the you know the age and the height and the you know it would sort of give you all the elements for you and then you had to put it together and. Uh, make it into a character but it gave you the start and that's it sounds very similar um very very similar you you plot it out based off of just random chance and uh so that will be for the pantsers that absolutely refuse <laughs> to use plot lines <laughs> excellent stuff do we have any anything else after the, with the quick guide series uh, after the 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 fortune telling one uh that... right now with our economy the way it is uh I, I've held back on a book that I don't like Christmas and it's in the South. That is not a very popular opinion to have. <laughs> and so uh, I wrote a book that's nonfiction based off of all the, the world's um, myths, legends and history going all the way back to the Romans and the Vikings and uh, even the Egyptians. And so I explained how Viking culture changed Egyptian culture a little bit. And so I talk about all these different elements and how it all has conflated into what we know about Christmas. As soon as this COVID-19 mess goes away and our economy starts getting back, then like I said before, everything I do is a business decision. So I have manuscripts that I have not published because it's the wrong time. And hopefully when the right time comes out, that's one of one of the manuscripts I have ready to go that I want to put out into the marketplace. Brilliant. Um, is there anything else you'd like to plug, Kenneth, while uh, while we're here? Is there anything else you'd like to discuss about your book? Because I've asked all my questions now. Uh, not really. Uh, it <laughs> talks about human humanoid, non-humanoid characters, so there's a lot of different elements in it. Like I said, it was a very short book, but I want it to be very down and dirty and give you the data you need. And it's supposed to be kind of like a, uh, a springboard that you can go to other topics and other other resources for. So I, this is something to add to your library and then with the hopes that you add other books of its kind from other uh, people that have different viewpoints on the matter so that you can start formulating your own ideas about character usage and character types. That sounds that that sounds like a, a very uh, very noble cause with this uh, with this book, and it definitely because um, that's obviously how you've managed to write this book is sort of you you've from the sounds of it you really have sort of dug in and you've done your research you know your history and um, yeah and then you formulated your own opinion in hopes that it'll uh, 
maybe persuade others to formulate their own opinion. Because I think that's another problem with writing these days. We have mob mentality. I don't know if you see on Twitter a lot, but they sit, there seems to be um, mm -hmm. people. People seem to to gang up and uh, <laughs> tell you that there's only one way to do something. Um, but we'll uh, we'll not get too deep into that today. Um, that that will wrap this uh, this interview up. So. Um, a quick guide to archetypes and allegory. It's available on Amazon. We will leave, uh, leave a link to this in the description below. Um, I will also link Kenneth's Twitter, so please go and drop him a follow and feel free to check out his other works. Sounds like a very, very, you know, smart set of books to, to acquire for any upcoming writer. I have been Liam London. I also have my own project. It's a science fiction audiobook. It's currently very rough, but I'll leave a link if you want to check that out and drop me a sub. Absolutely uh, would mean the world to me. But uh, to wrap this off, I just want to say a very big thank you to Kenneth. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. And uh, it's, you know, what you've, what you've discussed is fascinating. So uh, thank well, you thank for coming you. on, Kenneth. I, I appreciate being on. <laughs> Brilliant. So that, that wraps this up, guys. I will uh, see you on the next one. <laughs>